Okay, highway robbery. Um, I'm going to talk in this video a little bit about uh, what highway robbers were, background to the period, um, a few examples of famous highway robbers. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the difference between um, this period that the highway robbers are in and the period before. And then I'll talk about the rise and fall of highwaymen because that's more, for me personally, I think that's most likely to be an exam question. Um, so to start with, we'll look at the factors. Um, pretty straightforward stuff. We've got government and their attitudes towards highwaymen, which is essentially the bloody code um, and, a, and a fear of crime. We've got the attitudes of society, um, people not seeing um, highwaymen as being essentially criminals um, and overlap with social social crimes. Travel and changes to travel um, technology and um, mainly the um, opportunity to get your hands on cheap guns and uh, things like that. And then obviously we've got poverty. Um, so highwaymen were committing these crimes because um, it was the poor essentially robbing the rich. So to start with, we'll just look at the background of the period of the bloody code. So um, it's really important to note that from 1688 through to 1868, we're talking about the bloody code. Um, the bloody code starts to wind down in the 1820s when um, the government start, start to make um, the death penalty um, only punishable for quite serious crimes like... Um, murder however this 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 topic highwaymen is is smack bang in the middle of the bloody code so highwaymen will be punished by being um executed or transported as part of the bloody code um highway robbery itself has got its beginnings in the english civil war so there is an overlap there um uh, between uh, witchcraft and, and highway robbery um by 1700, um, high, highwaymen have, have reached epidemic proportions. So they started off in the confusion of the English Civil War, which is when um, Oliver Cromwell and Parliament um, were at war with King Charles. Um, and this is a period where the country's in complete chaos. People don't know what's going on. There's no law and order. Uh, justice of the peace and courts aren't able to do their job. So it's a great opportunity, not only for people like Matthew Hopkins to go hunting witches, but for highwaymen to start start doing what they were doing. Um, and by 1700, the government have decided enough is enough, and this needs to be dealt with. Um, a little bit about the myth versus reality for you. Um, the idea that highwaymen were these romantic, um, you know, charming gentlemen is really a myth that's been created by people who wrote books about it. Um, a really famous book about highwaymen, uh, about Dick Turpin, saying that he was as charming man as Rookwood. Um, but it was things like children's stories and then later on in the 18 and 1900s comics and you know those kind of things. The idea that highwaymen were these uh, charming gentlemen is, is pretty much rubbish, apart from one guy I'll talk about in a second called Claude Duval. Um, most highwaymen were thieves, they were thugs, they were, they were brutal, horrible people. They would cut your tongue out, they'd murder you, they were rapists, they were horrible. Um, an example of a horrible highwayman is Dick Turpin, who lived 1705 to 1739. Um, an example of a highwayman who was a little bit nicer is Claude Duval. Um, he was a Frenchman born in Normandy who came over to England. Um, and he did things like charm the ladies. Um, there's an example of him offering someone half the money back that he's stolen on f um, from them just to have a dance with his wife. So if you want an example of a horrible um, highwayman, you've got Dick Turpin. And then a nicer one, who was a little bit more like the, the mythical stereotype, is Claude Duval. Uh, and there's the dates that they were alive. Both of them were caught and executed, just for just so you know. Um, the period that we've, we're looking at is the period in the 1700s. Uh, previous to this, in the 1500s to 1700, um, authorities had feared things like heresy, vagabonds and witches. And these are very superstitious things. The period 1700s sees um, a rejection of this. You've got the last um, execution for heresy in the 1612, and by 1736 your witch laws, witchcraft laws have been repealed, which means that the government are no longer going to convict people of being a witch. Um, and what you've got now is actual fear of actual crime, rather than things like witches and supernatural stuff. Um, so finally, just to finish with, why was there a rise and, f and why was there a rise and fall in high women? Now I think this is a good thing to look at because I think this is the kind of question you might get in an exam. Um, so first of all, we'll look at why there was a rise. So first of all, you've got improved roads so more people can travel around England. You've got handguns becoming cheap and easy to get hold of. Um, there's lots of places in England where pe um, highwaymen can hide, secluded places where coaches have to slow down and they can be ambushed. And finally, horses, which are basically your getaway vehicle, become cheap and easy to buy. 
The reason why there was a fall is that open land around towns as a population increased were built on. Mounted patrols, especially the Bow Street Runners, were set up around London and places like that to stop highwaymen and this had a massive impact on them because they couldn't operate. Rewards and information was given and shared about highwaymen, um, especially again the Bow Street Runners with their publication, their newspaper, The Human Cry, um, which made it hard for highwaymen to operate. And then finally, Justice of the Peace refused to license taverns that were used by highwaymen. And this meant that there was nowhere for them to hide or nowhere for them to go. Okay. Now, hopefully that is a nice little overview of, of the rise and fall of, of highwaymen and makes the topic a little bit more clear for you.